an exile, coins are as useful as teats on a bull. Now you have the look of a connoisseur, an educated appreciator of all things exquisite and dangerous. And I, Kardira, am one who provides such delights. Once a lord of influence and opulence, I am now but a humble peddler seeking to recover his lost fortunes. Gold coins of Paranda's mintage, secreted away in gilded chests so as to escape the grasping digits of that puritanical usurper, Vole of Thebris. Perhaps you have seen such chests on your travels? If so, I could offer you antiquities of remarkable potency, paraphernalia of pernicious craftsmanship. All I would ask in return is the conveyance of the contents of said chests to my person. As fortune would have it, I have such a wonder in stock even now. A relic of such formidable agency that I shudder to think what it could do in the hands of one predisposed to use it. For a little coin, those hands could be yours. Yes, you are quite right to query my curious penchant for obsolete currency. Once there was a time when my personal symphony was composed quite completely of the delightful tinklings of coinage. Nowadays, I'm dancing to someone else's tune. I have a backer, you see, who generously supports my ongoing liquidity. Naturally, he expects a good return on his investment, and it transpires that only coinage of the golden variety will satiate that expectation. Long may we prosper from this relation. Chittus was shaping up to be the greatest leader since Veluso. My nephew's jembling thaumatocracy would have made the Empire truly eternal, would have raised mankind up from the fragile muck of flesh and blood. And the wealth, oh, the riches that could have flowed through the Empire's capitalist capillaries. Then that idiot of a High Templar had to come along and ruin it all. Him and his god of purity, and his army of fanatics and barbarians. A veritable horde of ignorance. If Chittas had lived, the Empire would have lived. And oh, what a wondrous and eternal life it would have had. Whenever you find gold, you know where to bring it. The same day that Veruso planted his banner in the soil of San, the Parandas family built the first market stall. That one stall spawned so many others that the people came to call our venture Parandas Markets. We were never vain enough to make the name official. Until Chittas took the throne, we were a most unassuming consortium. Yes, we did occasionally employ the Silent Brotherhood to remove the more stubborn obstacles to our commercial endeavors. But for the most part, we tended to solve our issues with coin and contract, rather than bow and blade. In hindsight, we should have taken the reins of power much earlier. If we had done so then, perhaps I could now be speaking of Parandus in the plural, rather than the singular. Whenever you find gold, you know where to bring it. When you're a fat purse such as I, you are wise to ensure yourself against being slit and emptied. In the face of Volt's ridiculous crusade to Highgate, I thought it only prudent to bolster my insurance policies. It was in our household god Prospero that I found my ideal underwriter. While my relations paid tithe and lip service to Prospero the symbol, Prospero the myth, I chose to dig a little deeper than that. To my delight, it transpired that our god was not only real, but of a similar opinion regarding the near, uncertain future of the Empire. We signed a contract, Prospero and I, and more than two centuries have borne witness to our successful partnership. The best deal I ever made. I look forward to our next fruitful exchange.
the god of lost souls and found treasures. Lord of the underworld and all its material bounty. Gems, precious metals, coal, a myriad of subterranean substances, exotic and volatile. If it has value and can be unearthed with pick and shovel, it falls within Prospero's divine concerns, as do all those who trade in them. Prospero was a god of our ancestors, the Asmerians. As we Eternals descended from those mountains, our gods descended with us. To the mundane mind, they are myths, nothing but stories. To those with a little more imagination, they can be so much more. Long may we prosper from this relation. So you polished off Izaro's Lord's Labyrinth, have you? Prove that you have the metal for Imperial leadership. Sadly, the Empire isn't what it used to be. But you're more than welcome to knock it back into shape for us. Despite my personal feelings surrounding Izaro Frisius, he did provide we Parandus folk with an unprecedented opportunity. Over the centuries, the Frisius family had blocked out every attempt to gain the throne on the scandalous basis that our blood was not of imperial quality. So when Azaro called that whole blood fiasco into question with his Lord's Labyrinth, it gave us the only clear shot we would ever have at sovereignty. Without Azaro, the Parandus name may never have come to be associated with the throne. So in a somewhat qualified fashion, he has my gratitude. Oh, and refund is not in my vocabulary.